Step by step. Step number one. Same goes for equations, whether it's equals or an inequality. You're solving. Simplify both sides completely. Also, if you have fractions, undo the fractions. And that's how you know, we multiply everybody by the least common denominator. So number six is the one with fractions. So we'll get to that example. Simplify. Number four, both sides are simplified. Let's, let's, I can't do anything with 8x minus 9. They're not like terms. I can't go any further with the left side. On the right side, I can't go any further with this. 7x minus 3, I can't simplify that. They're both simplified. But number 5, we got a lot of stuff to do. On number 5, step 1 really comes into play, and also number 6 because of the fractions. Simplify both sides. Well, this one simplifies that. Then we want to gather... Separate the, the, the variable, separate x from everybody else, but we want to gather all the x's on the left side so we can read this from left to right. When it's an equation, it doesn't matter. X is on the right, x is on the left, it doesn't matter. That, that, that's because it's equals. When you're doing inequalities, we want to read the inequality from left to right. Step two. Gather all variable now let's put this all x's now maybe it's a y maybe it's an r maybe it's a t so when I say x is just a general variable okay gather all the x's on the left, on the left side of the inequality, and all constants, all numbers. On the right. So I want to point out something to you. When you solve something, let's just make it a simple equation. 5x minus 4 equals 8. Equation. We want to gather all the variables on one side, get all the numbers on the other side. That's the first thing you think about doing. The last thing you're going to do when you think this out, remember you're solving for x. Just before the step, when you solve for x, you would have a 5x by itself. So the last thing you're going to do is undo multiplication or division. You don't undo multiplication or division in the first step. You can't subtract 5 to get x by itself. This is time, so you have to divide by 5. So the very first thing is separate this from the numbers. So you add 4 to both sides, and you have a 5x equals 12. And then the last thing is undo multiplication or division. We undo 5 times x by dividing both sides by 5. And then there's the solution. So right here, get all your variables on one side. The way you're, you know, you have 8x, 7x, we want to bring it to the left. I'm going to subtract 7x from both sides. 
when you gather your variables left and right, when you put your numbers on the left and right, it's addition or subtraction. We add or subtract. We undo. If it's a positive, we subtract from both sides. If it's a negative, we add to both sides. All right, this one gets me. 8x minus 7x. X. 1x. 8 of these x's, 8 x's, take away 7 x's, so 8 of them minus 7 of them will be 1x. Okay, and it's about the quantity. When you read 8x, 7x, remember that means 8 times x, which means we have 8 x's. 8 x's added together. 8 of these x's take away 7 of the x's, leaves 1x. Or in this case, just x. So all of the x's are on the left. Now I got to take that constant. To the right, so you add nine. X by itself on the left is still less than or equal to negative three plus nine is six. And we solve it. X has to be less than or equal to a six. This question does not use step three. Because we don't have to multiply or divide by anything. It's we have x by itself. If it was a 2x, divide by 2. If it was a 3x, divide by 3. Whatever you have, divide. Like we did here, we ended up with 5x equals 12. 5 of the x take the undo multiplication by the So there is a step three here. I'm going to leave it blank because we don't apply it to this one. Step four. You want to graph and shade on the number one. Plot. Um, graph and shade on the number line. So, If I had a number line below this, you have zero here. Positive six is over here. When you plot that point, is it going to be an open circle or a closed circle? Closed. So when you do these number lines, when you have to do it, I want circles, not the brackets and the parentheses, because it's just messy. So, so if it's just met, greater than or less than, okay, it would be these take no. If greater than or less than, Open circle. And if it's greater than we have an equal or less than with an equals, that's a closed circle. So the six would be a closed circle because it has an equals. Okay. And I'm going to put the rest of that right here. So less than or equal to, closed circle, just less than, like number six will be a, so you think ahead, that's going to be a closed circle because it has an equals, that's going to be an open circle because it doesn't have an equals. 
Then you want to shade on the number line. You're going to shade solutions on the number line. On. And the reason why we have X on the left-hand side, if X is less than or X is less than or equal to, the inequality is pointing to the left. You're going to shade left. And if we have x greater than or x greater than or equal to, you're going to shade to the right. So this x is less than all the answers. All the answers that make this work have to be less than or equal to the 6. What side is less than 6? To the left. So you shade on the number line. This way. And the last thing would be write your final answer using interval notation. So using interval notation, we want to describe this picture and we're going from left to right. So it goes, who's down there? Which one? But negative infinity. From left to right, all of the answers that are being shaded here is everything from the left all the way up to six. It stops at six. So where is it coming from? Parentheses, it's coming from negative infinity from left to right. It stops at six because it's a solid circle, because it's an equal, it's a bracket on six. Everything from negative infinity up to six, including six. That's what that simple notation says. All of the solutions are from negative infinity to six. And then because of the bracket, it includes six. Um, I just made that up. I was I was given an example of what it looked like if it was just an equation. Yeah. That has nothing to do with anything that I have with them. Yeah. This is um, what do we need to undo first. And we add or subtract from left side to right side. And then we do the last thing is division. Okay. Ask sooner. Because <laughs> you know, you know what you, you know, you put your brain on pause, you want when you're pondering that, and then it's like you're thinking about that one scene in the movie when uh uh Captain America finally gets the hammer and you know it's worthy, but then you miss out on the rest of it. Because it is such a good scene. Great. All right. Number five. Number five is one of the reads. It has a purpose. <laughs> because I am tired of over and over explaining that. Not over explaining, but explaining over and over what not to do. So, simplify both sides completely. What is seven minus two? No, it's not. Not here. Order of operations. Order of operations. If you have parentheses, do what's in the parentheses. If you have exponents, take care of those exponents. Then you multiply and or divide in order from left to right. Then you add or subtract in order from left to right. Parentheses. I can't do anything with x minus 4. They're not like terms. So that parentheses is simplified. On the right, you can't do anything with 1 minus 2x. They're not like terms. So there's nothing we can simplify inside parentheses. We don't have any exponents. Then, 
The next one is multiply and or divide. What's the last one? Add or subtract. You're not going to do subtraction until you do that multiplication first. It's two times that parentheses. But no, many, many times I see that seven my student, they put a five right there. And that right there, the whole thing cannot come out right. And it's that one order of operation mistake that causes a cascading failure with everything else. Okay, the, the missiles are gonna lock. Or a death pond one and where the earth is coming. Because it can't come out. It's all the order of operations. Don't make it up as you go along. It's one step at a time, and you'll get to the right end. So we're going to multiply. So this is still seven. You're going to distribute the negative two into the parentheses. Negative two times x is negative two x. Negative two times negative four. Negative times a negative, that's positive. Two times four, that's an eight. So we distribute. And that's still the beta that we should do. Over here, distribute the five. Five times one is five. Five times the negative two x, a positive times a negative, is going to be a negative. Five times two x is ten x. The most important word that I have in step one, it's even underlined, simplify both sides completely. Don't try to solve the thing until you simplify both sides. On the left-hand side, I can still do a little cleanup. Seven plus eight is 15 minus two X is greater than or equal to five minus 10 X. Simplified complete. So when you work this part out, and I'm trying to prevent, you know, don't do one of these, don't do this. I'll get students that are confused between finishing step one and doing step two where you get everything on one side. When you move things from one side to the other, you undo positive by subtraction, and that's a negative nine, so we need to undo that with addition. So when you're moving things from one side to another, you're adding or subtracting from both sides. Here's what I see that I, I want to fix if I can. I'll say, all right. Simplify both sides so they see this eight and they okay, minus eight, minus eight, because they've seen some part like that before. They've seen it happen before. But what has happened is I now put negative 16. I added negative 16 to the left. I put a negative eight and another negative eight. If I put two negative eights, I get a negative 16. And I did nothing to the other side. They don't have to do anything to the other side. It no longer has that equals. It's no longer balanced. So when you're doing the simplify, you're just combining things that are like each other. That's a seven and that's an eight. They add it to 15. And then minus the two X is greater than or equal to a five minus 10 X. You don't add or subtract things until you get to step two. I put the wording on step two in that order. I said it the way I said it for a reason. Gather all your variables, gather all the x's on the left. Focus on the variable first. That's what you're trying to solve for. We want to look at x's. Then take care of the numbers. Focus on the variables first. Okay? If I'm going to bring this negative 10x to the left-hand side. How am I going to undo a negative 10x? 
we add 10 X, we add 10 X to both sides. So there's the 15, negative two X plus 10 X, that's positive eight X is greater than or equal to a five. Focus on the variable, bring the X to the left. Then focus on the constant. X is on the left, we want all the numbers on the right. So since this is a positive 15, I want to undo 15 plus the 8x. I have to subtract the 15. Eight x is still greater than or equal to five minus fifteen is negative ten. So all of that was just step two. Okay. Short, sweet, simple. Step two. Step three. Undo multiplication and or division. There's one major be careful point here. We went over on Tuesday. When you have inequalities, if you multiply or divide by a positive, everything's fine. But when you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to flip the inequality. So it's just a matter of thinking ahead. If I'm going to multiply or divide by a negative, flip the inequality. So to solve for X, what am I going to do next? Divide both sides by So there's X. Am I flipping the one? Yeah. I divided by, is this a positive eight or a negative? So I'm dividing by positive. Do I flip the one? No. It doesn't matter what you divide into. It doesn't matter if you divide into a positive or divide into a negative. It doesn't matter. What are you dividing with? What are you dividing by? I'm dividing by positive thing. No flip. The only time you flip it is if you multiply it by, by the, a negative number. If it was negative 8, that's greater than or equal to negative 10. I'm dividing both sides by negative 8, then I check. Okay.
It's still greater than or equal to negative 10 over 8 is a negative. Simplify your fractions. No decimals unless the question says you give me decimals and round to this number. But simplify your fraction. This is five times two. This is four times two. Don't forget it's an A. The two reduce some level of negative five over four. Always simplify. And I'm going to bring six over here, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up number five right here. I have x greater than or equal to negative five over four. That's the answer. That's the solve. We solve the inequality. X is greater than or equal to negative five over four. And if that's all you needed to do, you'd walk away. But you still should wrap and shade on number one because we want interval notation. That's the final answer to putting it in that, that notation. So here's the number line. We have a zero right there. Negative five over four. Is it to the left or the right of the zero? To the left, that's negative. Is it going to be an open circle or closed circle? Closed, because it has meters. Then we want to shade on the number line all of the answers. What is the picture? So am I shading to the right or the left? Shading to the right. Because all the x's are greater than or equal to negative 5 or Greater than is to the right. What direction is the inequality pointing? It's pointing to the right. That's a coincidence. Kind of nice. But it only works if x is left to right, x over here. So this is what the answers look like. Peace of mind. You want some peace of mind? Did I get it right? What answer that's really simple to plug in? What number? That you can plug in really easy that you have here is supposed to work. Zero. Zero is being shaped. Zero is getting shaped. So zero is supposed to be an answer. So piece of mind, if I just go up here and I plug zero into these x's, Seven minus two times zero minus four greater than or equal to five times one minus two times zero. So parentheses first, that's seven minus two times zero minus four is negative eight. I'm sorry, negative four. I'm getting there. And that's greater than or equal to five times two times zero is zero. So this is one minus zero. So it's just one. Over here, 7 minus 2 times negative 4. Remember, you still got to multiply first. Negative 2 times negative 4, that's 7 plus 8 now. On the left hand side, 7 plus 8. On the right hand side, 5 times 1, well, that's just 5. 7 plus 8 is 15. Is 15 greater than or equal to the 5? Yeah. So I shaded zero. Zero is getting lit up by the by the shading. Zero is supposed to be an answer. Well, I'm going to check the zero. And sure enough, it works. And if you're one of those paranoid types like me, maybe you pick a number to the left. It doesn't work. Over here, pick a number that, you know, don't pick something crazy like negative 1,000. Pick a number to just the left of 5 over 4. And it's not supposed to work, so I plug it in, it shouldn't. So give me a number that's to the left, a really you know close number to the five. Sorry, I keep to see if the, the brains if the, if the squirrels are turning the head. That's the wheel is blown. Here's negative five or four. We pick zero on the right side, 
Give me a number right here that's smaller than negative five or four. Nice one. Give you a hint. Give you a hint. Here's negative five over four. Always fractions. That's all I want. Fractions. Unless you can told up. That doesn't mean you can't think of it as a decimal or think of it as a mixed number. Five over four. Four goes into five one time, and you have one left over. It's one and a quarter. That's what that is. Five over four is five quarters. So we're dealing with negative 1.25. And negative 1.25 is going to be between what two numbers? Over here, this is A. Well, negative two, and over here will be a negative one. Okay. So I'm just going to use negative two. When I plug in negative two, it should not work. And again, this is just about peace of mind. It's also, it's good practice for substitution of solving. So I'm going to plug in negative two. No, that. And it's equal negative two just to see if we have it correct. I better get a false. I better, I better get something that doesn't work. So this is seven minus two times negative two minus four is greater than or equal to five times one minus x is a negative two. So two times a negative two. And that's just a short preview of what 1.3 is about. 1.3 is substitution and simplifying. Plug in something and simplify. So I plugged in negative two, and now we're going to simplify. Parentheses first. This is seven minus two times negative two minus four. That's a negative six. Greater than or equal to. This is five times. One, a negative two times a negative two, that's one plus two. Sorry, one plus four. Oops. Negative two times negative two is positive four. One plus four, that's a five. Seven, negative two times negative six, that's seven plus 12. Negative two times negative six is now plus 12. Greater than or equal to 25. Is 19 greater than or equal to 25? No. Nope. Which, this is where it's going to get a little like, think about what you were doing and why we're doing it. We're plugging it in for peace of mind. We plug the number into the right to see if we're shading in the correct direction, and it worked. We plug in zero, this came out true, okay? Now I just want to make sure that nothing is this way, that these are not so So I'm checking negative two, and when I plug in negative two, I don't get true, I get a false statement. Therefore, negative two doesn't work just like we have. You don't have to do that. I'm not going to ask you to you know check your answers on the test or quit. However, why do something and not know if it's right or wrong? You don't have to do it on paper. You can, you can do it in your head. Do it in your head, but be very careful. Take one side at a time. Just think it through. Okay. So now it's interval notation. From left to right, the answer start. There's nothing over here. So we're not doing negative infinity L because it's pointing that way. So from left to right, the answer started negative 5 over 4. And they go forever to the right. Is this a bracket or a parenthesis from the negative 5 over 4? Bracket. It's a bracket because it's equal to, it's a solid term. And then it's going to go all the way forever to the right 
And down there to the right, here's in pit. So that would be the answer using interval notation. Along the of fractions. <laughs> Number six. Get comfortable with fractions because you have all the power to work a problem that you have fractions in and then undo the fractions so you don't have to worry about it. We want to multiply, to undo the fractions, multiply every term by the least common denominator. I have three denominators, six, a five, and a three. So here's my first question. Can anybody tell me what the least common denominator is going to be? What? Three. So if you say three. Three. Oh, 30. Okay. I was hoping you could give me the wrong answer. Three. Yeah, if you say three... If I multiply this by a three, it undoes the denominator like we want, but three is not going to undo a five. Three is not going to undo a six. Three is not big enough. We want the number that each denominator goes into evenly. So it has to be divisible by six, divisible by five, and divisible by three. So think about it slowly. I need a common denominator for just the six and five first. Because if it doesn't undo the six and five, I, 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 I can't tell you. It has to undo both. So the first number that six and five go into is 30. Six, then 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, keep on going. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. There's the 30, there's my common denominator. Can I just do six times five? Yeah, but it might not always be the smallest one. Because the next number, 30, that will undo the six and five, but then you got to bring down, don't forget, there's a three. So I need a common denominator for 33. If you just multiply, oh, six times five, 39, I'll always do it that way. Well, then you're probably going to go three times 30 and get 90. 90 works, but it's not the smallest. You have a bigger mess to clean up. It'll work, but it's not going to be the small time. So now you just think about 30 and 3. Well, 3 goes into 30 10 times. So 3 times 10 would give me 30. So 3 and 30, their common denominator will be a 30. Don't think of all three at one time. Do one at a time. Okay, one group, one uh, uh, set of denominators. And I know I'm sorry about this, but what if, what if four? So if this is four, well, you now have 30 and four. Four does not go into 30. So 30 would not undo the four over here. So now you could multiply four times 30, 120. But that's big. Is there another number? Well, 30, then you get 60, then you get 90, then you get 120, and keep on going. But 4 goes into 60, 4 times 15, 4 goes into 60, 15 times. So the smaller denominator would be 60. So don't overthink it. Don't just do it by multiplying. It would work, but the number would get a little big. So the least common denominator here is 30. Every term gets multiplied by its own 30. So we're going to multiply this one by 30, this one by 30, and this one by 30. 
six goes into 35 times, five times one of five, so we get five minutes. Plus, five goes into 36 times, six times 11, that's a 66. And still less than. A positive times a negative. Don't forget the sign. It's going to be a negative. Three goes into 30 10 times. So we're left with 10 times a negative two. That's a negative 20 X. Then we want to get your, you know, gather all the variables on the left, constants on the right. So let's stay in robot mode. Robot mode says we don't think for ourselves. We're just going to do it step by step exactly as it. But we're going to run into something that I know always causes a pause in the program. Gather all the variables on one side. So here's 5x, that's negative 20x. I want to bring the negative 20 to the left. So how am I going to undo negative 20x? We're going to add, add 20x to both sides. And then we get 5x plus 20x, that is equal to 25x. And then it's like, okay, the brain short circuits. Right here, this kind of like draws a little bit of a problem with, I know I've seen. So they now know there's nothing on this right side. So they take this inequality and just put it in between the 25X and the 66 for some reason. They just put it here because there's nothing there. So they're making it up as they go along. Oh. No, no. You still have plus 66 is less than what? Zero. Zero. You have something over that. Zero. But when, you know, I'm supposed to put zero? <laughs> zero. I don't, what, what's going to happen? Well, let's keep on going. So the variables are on the left. I got to get the constant, take this over to the right. It's a positive 66, take away 66 on both sides. So 25x. I subtract 66 from both sides. Do I flip? Do I flip? No. No. Because I'm adding or subtracting. You only flip inequality if you multiply or divide by a negative. I'm not even multiplying or dividing, so I can't flip. So now divide both sides by 25. Undo multiplication, divide by 25. Do I flip here? Yeah. I divide it by, is that a positive or a negative 25? Positive. If I divide both sides by a positive, do I flip? No. It's still less than 66 over 25. It doesn't reduce. There's no common factor. That's the answer. Negative 66 over 25. So instead of being in robot mode, you're capable of thinking for yourself. Which would be a great accomplishment to these one. Thanks. When I did this way, I brought the 20x to the left, and then I had to take the constant to the right. The goal is to get x by itself. So if you start thinking for yourself, you say, all right, find x. That's it. there's nothing but x's over here. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take the x to the right side. But you already have to have a plan. And the plan is this. If X is on the right, then the inequality shading coincidence and shade the same way that an inequality point, 
doesn't work when X is on the right. So your plan is, if I end up with X on the right, so we don't this way like a number, I can always trade sides. And if I trade sides, I have to flip the inequality. If I trade sides, I would flip it. So if I end up with X over here, I'll just flip it and get it on the other side. Okay. Five is less than six, but if I trade sides, switch the five and six, it's no longer a less than. We flip it. So now this is 66. It's still less than negative 25x. But now we're really in four. Think ahead. I'm now going to divide by what? Divide both sides by negative 25. On this side, you have a negative 66 over a 25. On this side, you have a positive x. Do I flip this inequality? Yes. I divide it by a negative. So I'm going to change this from this direction to that direction. Okay. So I have two answers right here. On this one, I have x less than negative 66 over 25. Over there, I got negative 66 over 25 is greater than the x. When I'm going to graph and shape this, I want x on the left. I got x on the right. So there's one more thing. If I want to shade correctly, I'll trade places. x over here, negative 66 over 25 there. And if I trade places, I got to flip that one more time. Whatever you do, don't break a rule. If you decide to go this way, well, the rules kind of stay nice. Because you don't have to worry about flipping twice. But if you want to try to get it on the right side and then flip it, you have to flip when you divide by the negative. And then when you trade sides, you have to flip it again. It's just a matter of thinking it before you move. Stay within the rules, you'll get to the right answer. Okay. Cannot just randomly do something and not the same thing every second, every single time. Now we're going to wrap and shape. So number line here zero. I don't. You don't have to put negative sixty five. You know, count a whole bunch of dots and figure out where it is. This is it on the left or right of zero? It's over here because it's negative. When I graph this, is it an open or closed circle? It's, it's an open because there's no equals. It's just less than. And when I shade on the number line because it's less than, am I shading to the left or the right? <laughs> to the left. Less than we go left. So that's a picture of all the answers. Peace of mind. Well, I don't know where negative. I don't want. I don't have to get that close. Zero. Zero is an answer. Zero work. No, because it's not shaving. We'll change the zero. One half or one sixth of zero plus eleven over twenty over five equals negative two thirds times a zero. What's one sixth of zero? What's one sixth of zero? What's one sixth of nine zero? Zero. Zero plus 11 over five is supposed to be less than negative two thirds times zero. Zero. So we end up with is 11 over five less than zero? Yes or no? Oh, that's false. Which, oh, um, I feel better. Zero is not supposed to work, so zero didn't. I shade it correctly, provided negative 66 over 25 is right. But that's all I needed to do. I just need a little bit of peace of mind. Inequality, or sorry, integral notation. So we go from left to right, it's all the way down there, so that 
parenthesis to negative infinity, and it goes all the way up to negative 66 over 25. It's not equal to just less than. So is that a parenthesis or bracket on the negative 66 over 25? Parenthesis. Yeah. You only have a bracket when you have equals. Solving inequalities is going to is going to be around all semester. There's going to be some you know pieces here, pieces there. So this is basically a good straightforward review that's supposed to. This class is to help you know what we're going to be doing later on then. When we need to solve these inequalities is when we get to a question called domain and range. Okay? So you're not going to do a ton of them, but there is one very specific place where you're supposed to give the answer using interval notation. That was my goal. Interval notation. Okay, make sure you know how to do that. All right. I'm going to put up here the quiz prep for 1.2, the one I posted on Tuesday. If you haven't tried it yet, you need to try it. We're going to go over any questions at the beginning of the class. But I highly recommend you give it a shot. And this is the first thing we'll do at the beginning of the tent. So we have to write the equation, the line, and slope intercept form here. And then you have to three separate questions. Are the line are these lines parallel or perpendicular? Show your work. Are these parallel or perpendicular? Yes or no, or write down which one it is or either. But you gotta prove why or show your work why. We'll say it anyway. Parallel and perpendicular, if the slopes are equal, you got parallel. And if the slopes are opposite and reciprocal, you got perpendicular. 